Hey boys, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. This is Salem 1692. As you can see, this is one of those magnetic style games. I've also played Deadwood by this publisher as well. This is by Facade Games, and what we're looking to do is find out the witches and kill them. This is a kind of social deduction game. Everybody is going to pick a character of your choice, place it in front of you. You all have different abilities. And then what you're going to be doing as well is then taking some decks of cards. Depending on player counts, you're going to have some witch cards. So witch cards are going to be shuffled and dealt out. Everybody will be closing their eyes and any witches will then be opening their eyes to see who's who. But there will also be a constable and the constables can help to protect people as well. So uh, this is just a brief overview. This is not my game, so this is why I'm just doing this handheld. Everybody is going to take five cards and what you're going to do is secretly look at them and see if it says if you're a witch or not. You're then going to be placing these out in front of you however you wish. So I chose to actually place them facing away from me, but it's up to you. So there's 1692 based on real characters. Those characters I showed you down here, these are real people in actual ages at the time. So we're going to place a fourth one out, a fifth one out now. Five cards out, and on your turn, you are looking to try and ultimately find and maybe make sure that, in this case, George Burroughs or whoever doesn't get killed whoever's in the game. So what you're going to do on your turn is you're going to be drawing cards. You can either draw two cards or you can play some cards. So just as an example, I might take two cards and the next person takes two cards. The witches want to get through this deck because ultimately that hits a night phase, in which case they are going to vote to kill somebody. I'll come back on to a second. What can you do with a card? Well, in this case, that's quite a good example. If you happen to then play, so a future turn, if you draw two cards, you'll play on a future turn, play this as a witness. Hey, I'm accusing you, I'm a witness, I can see something. And you're gonna play this on somebody. Just imagine this was somebody else's. You're playing them this, and once they hit seven accusations, they're revealing a card. In this case, they're not a witch. It's permanently visible. Check out my, um, uh, <laughs> they blow on the clock tower. Check out my good cop, bad cop videos to see a similarity slightly to this. I've also got this card, which I don't have to play, but discard any one blue card that is currently in front of any player. But as you see, I haven't got any. So let's keep on going. Let's say the next person's got two cards already. They've got piety, no red cards can be played on a player's piety. So in this case, there can't be any accusation cards. Let's just say I've got that on me here. And then obviously I've got this, and imagine I didn't have piety. This person's now got one accusation, and now the next player's got two. This person's really get bundled on. They're now up to three, again, hitting seven, and then they're going to have to reveal. However, with one character, you can reveal on six. So that's how it's going to go. When you hit the night phase, everyone closes their eyes, as I mentioned. The uh, the uh, witches is going to try and, I was going to say werewolves, they're trying to kill somebody. And uh, ultimately, the constable can firstly try to protect somebody once the witches have been. So the constable, and I'll show you how that can move per player, can just like block, sorry, they're going to block a character. So they're going to protect one character. They won't be basically exposed. Then what's going to happen, we're going to go around everybody. And before this card is revealed, everybody's going to say, hey, do you want to try and, you know, recuse yourself and prove your innocence? And if you choose to prove your innocence, you're basically giving up a card. You say, well, it could be me. And in my first game, in my first round, in fact, the first night phase, I was actually targeted. So I chose to go, no, look, I am innocent. And it proved this. It's quite nice actually revealing these because you go, oh, could it say which? And that's how it's going to keep on going. Then what's going to happen once you've done that witch phase is everybody is going to take one card from the person to their left and pass one card, which they're going to pick as well, from the cards in front of you to the person to your right. And suddenly, that might mean that you are now a witch, or in this case, not a witch. So that's how the game gonna goes. It gets very late into actually seeing who is a witch. It's very interesting. But something I forgot, and it was very late, and even my partner next to me forgot too, is the person you're passing to, you should always know where that's going. So you do know what they take. So you know if they're now going to be a witch, as an example. That is pretty much how the game plays. It's a four to 12 player game, ages uh, 13 plus. I give it a very good rating, higher than average for me, average being a 6.3, uh, so it's already 6.4 now. Uh, I give this a seven out of 10. Check out my description on YouTube to like via the uh, Instagram and also over on Facebook, as well as Patreon and also the podcast. So pictures will be going up already to Instagram. But obviously like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more videos and loads more social deduction stuff. So as an example, in a two to three player game, now let's go with a four player game. There are 18 non-witch cards, one witch and one constable. Me, we most recently played as a six, which is there are two witches and one constable. You can also have a town crier, who's basically the most experienced person, who will basically be directing and opening and closing of the eyes, etc. And we actually chose to use a moderator in the last game, which was excellent. So it was really good fun, and I did like the theme that we're kind of getting into it. So um, yeah, you can also just let you know, in terms of this gavel, if you want to try and protect somebody, you can never play it on yourself. 
Uh, so you can't do anything that directly affects you like that piety card. You can't just try and block yourself like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. There's an hourglass you might have seen, which basically gives you about 30 seconds to try and figure out uh, what you want to do. But we didn't actually ever need to use that, which was quite good. And um, yeah, it's uh, quite a nice experience. Something you might want to check out. It doesn't take too long. So thanks so much for watching. For now, back to the uh, back to the table. And of course, do make sure comments are YouTube uh, on YouTube because this does get shared elsewhere. If this was too fast, just please slow it down. And of course, all the other videos typically are actually filmed with a tripod, so there's less wobbly. Thanks for now. Back to the table.